See, I can have one too. <laughs> Okay. okay, we're being silly. I'm Tay QC, and this is my best friend. Introduce yourself. Oh, wait. I got like three different names. Um, I could be Deja P, you know, I could be Khadija, or I could be KK. What do you want them to call you, though? You know what I mean? Deja P and Tay QC. I, I call her DD, so if you, you know, if you hear DD and the whole, <laughs> this whole, you know, it's because that's what I call her, so. She confused them with, you know, she want to be called, so. I have like, you know, a million different names. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? No. Oh, okay. I don't think it works that way. Okay. Nope. Okay. <laughs> so, we're going to be talking about modesty. Yay! <laughs> Woo! Modesty. Okay. We, um, I guess we should talk about our, some, our modesty story. How we got converted over to modesty. <laughs> sure. Oh. Modesty conversion, because <laughs> you know so salvation is just a yeah, it is a process. So. This is true. Salvation is a continual process. Okay, so you want to go first? No, this is your blog. Okay, I'll go first. Um, well, I mean, okay, I've been saved for a little while, a few years. Um, and I say a few years. I've grown up in church, but <laughs> I won't really say a lot of time. So, um. Been saved for a couple years now, but I wasn't really convicted about my dress. It was just, you know, oh, I'm just wearing what everybody else is wearing. Oh, this is acceptable, you know, whatever. So, um, the only time that I would dress modestly sometimes, I mean, not to say that my clothes were just like all over the place and I was showing every little bit of everything, <laughs> but um, I had to make sure you know, certain, my skirt was long enough and my shirt wasn't showing too much when I sang on the praise and worship team at church. But I didn't really think about it as if, you know, this is pleasing to God or anything like that. It was just a, you know, okay, well, this is what they want us to do. And I don't want to distract anybody from worship, you know. Um, my true, just straight up turnaround conviction um, situation, I guess, was a few... Um, weeks ago, months ago, Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. yeah, a few months ago, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, my best friend, her, um, and another friend of ours, Keiko. If you're watching, what up, girl? Hey, and <laughs> and, um, and I, we all went to uh, North Carolina. We went to Hope Baptist Church. Shout out um, to Hope Baptist. Shout out They're to Hope great Baptist. people. If you're not they the are. Church. Yes, Hope Baptist <laughs> Church. Um, ladies, make sure you wear a skirt. <laughs> we'll get into that. We'll get into all of that. But um, when I went, uh, pretty much it was a moment of conviction for me. First of all, all of the women there at that church, a specific church, and you know their little sister church or whatever, they all wear dresses or skirts and stuff, and they 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 wear them down uh, below their knee. And um, modesty, you know. The neckline is high up, and you know it's they, they don't show cleavage or anything like that. And um, they're very, very, very modest. But um, no one, no one preached a message on modesty, and nobody really talked about it that much. It was just seeing. I saw a lot of. Um, I saw them, and in their atmosphere and stuff like that, and they just were so wholesome and stuff like that. But then. I just started thinking and praying about it on my own while we were there and just was like, okay, well, what, what's the purpose of, of modesty in the first place? And God just was revealing a bunch of stuff to me, you know, in my prayer time and just secretly just walking around, just watching and stuff like that. It's like, this here is to glorify me, not me, but God. But, you know, it, it's not a, a situation where you're just doing it just because it, there was a purpose behind it and you know we'll get into some of the other stuff as well that I realized and everything but that was my little moment what was yours my turn um no well I got saved uh, in 2011 and mm -hmm. at that point God kind of started doing some stuff with me in regards to you know how I dress um I wouldn't say that I immediately flip the switch at that moment. Um, but I always, you know, um, God bless me up top. 
So, you know, I used to always gain attention that way. And when I got saved, of course, you know, I didn't like the attention that was being brought forth. So, of course, the Holy Spirit convicted me in that area. And I noticed that, okay, well, something has to change in the way that I dress. Um, not only for me, but, you know, at our church, we're family integrated. Shout out to CRCC. <laughs> but we have a lot of, like, the younger girls who look up to us. And I have a sister who's eight years old, um, younger than me who, you know, looks up to me. She's so, eight years younger than me. Younger. Okay. <laughs> yeah, younger. Sorry. Hey, Deja. But anyways, <laughs> I have a sister who's younger than me. And, of course, me being um, in my early 20s, she looks up to me. And if I'm dressed in a certain way, you know, and no one says anything to me, of course, she's going to think that she can get away with it as well. Um, so the Holy Spirit just revealed that to me. You know, you have a lot of the younger girls looking up to you. And how can you perceive to be a Christian and dress a certain way and tell them that they can't dress like that? You know, that's being hypocritical and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so a lot of that changed for me, you know, um, around, I guess, you know, the time of my conversion to Christianity um, in regards to how I dressed. And I noticed that a lot of the my guy friends are taller than me. So if I can look down and I can see cleavage, of course they can see it too. And, you know, there's a lot of married men in my church and I'm also, I'm so big on, I don't want to be a stumbling block to anybody that I'm like, okay, well, I have to cover this up, you know? So that was another, you know, issue. Um, and as she said, we went to Scott Brown's church. Um, of course, the Holy Spirit did his work with me there as far as pushing modesty even more. You know, I was always like a strickler for modesty, but I didn't understand the reasons why um, sometimes, you know, some of my pants were tight. And not to say you can't wear pants, but, you know, there's a certain way that, you know, your pants should fit on you. And my pants were too tight. They were showing everything. You know, so when I got down there and I'm seeing these women and they're just humble about their dress, not really caring about what anyone has to say, but they're still classy with it. They're still fashionable. And I was like, okay, Lord, well, they were um, fashionable. Yeah, too. they were. Like, they were. They, were they didn't rocking. look like really frumpy or anything like that. It was they. They did their thing, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and I just, you know, it was like the Holy Spirit basically showed me through those women. You know, this is what um, biblical womanhood should look like. You know, and even some of the ladies at my church, you know, they dress extremely modest. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, I it's it's different when you're home and you're seeing it. And then you go out somewhere else right. and you see yeah. it and you're like, okay, oh. that happens at my church too, but I haven't really, you know, paid, paid attention, attention to yeah. it. Yeah. You know, so it was like, like she said, the Holy Spirit convicted me of some things as well there. And it's funny because I was so convicted and it was like a couple of days later, she brought up to me about her conviction. <laughs> I was like, yo, yeah, I got convicted like, the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, like I said, they didn't talk about it at no. all. Nobody, it wasn't a topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. And the least bit other than um, when we went to the picnic or something like that, me and Keiko were talking about it. But it wasn't like a, you know. It wasn't brought up. Like It wasn't the topic of conversation. The and so. they weren't badgering people for what they had on because this picnic um, it's for, for the whole community. Yeah. So, of course, some people who come there for the picnic, they aren't Christians. So, they don't understand modesty or nothing like that. So, it wasn't like people would run up to them like, oh, why don't you have on this? Right. Or, you know, why is your shirt so low? You know, it was just that it being a Christian picnic, you know, that was the, the atmosphere to um, present yourself, you know, as what Christ sees or what Christ would like for us right. to look like to unbelievers the importance why do we dress modestly um the first point that i put was to glorify god that's it that's it that's all um <laughs> in the garden of eden they realized they were naked to them even though they at first they didn't know the difference between good and evil they knew after they ate the fruit that being naked was part bad. of that evil side it was right. bad or whatever and so clearly is something that does not glorify God to just be showing everything all over the place and whatnot. But you said something yesterday about um, them being covered oh. or God covering them or something. Gonna She's gonna find the Bible. The Bible. It's it is! 
yeah, okay. So in my own little like personal devotion time or whatnot, I was reading Genesis and um it says um Genesis verse no Genesis chapter three verse 21, I'm sorry, I mark up a lot. It says, And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments and skins and clothed them. And that just kind of stopped me in my tracks and it blew me away that even after, you know, the fall, God still showed love to Adam and Eve by being gracious and making them garments, you know, so to cover their nakedness, which they have been exposed to as naked once they had bitten the forbidden fruit. You know, they didn't know that they were naked. Well, certainly that their nakedness was bad until after they had bitten the forbidden fruit. And it just like kind of blew me away that even after in their disobedience, you know, even after them trying to hide from him and all of that, he still loved them enough to make them garments to cover their nakedness. And I was like, wow, what love is this? Well, in what the world is like, we sinned against him, but then he still loves us enough to provide for us and give us everything that we need to still glorify him. Right. He could have just said, "Oh, y'all, oh, y'all want, oh, oh, y'all, y'all want to be on this event? I doubt that he would have He could have took all them leaves for now, <laughs> but he didn't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no leaves. <laughs> but I just thought that was crazy. Like he loves us that much. So even in today's society, like why shouldn't we cover up when clearly he put that forth that we should to not draw uh, too much attention." To yourself yes. um in a prideful way okay so there is a fine line real fine line because some people they just do it because they just like to they just like right. to wear certain things or whatever they're not looking for the um attention or for the um validation from anybody it's just oh this is what i like to do I like to wear makeup. I'm really not looking for, oh, girl, that was, oh, you beat me. Right. No, it's not <laughs> that at all. It's just, I really like the, I don't know, all, all the colors <laughs> and the, you know, just the, I, I like it. I don't know. That's me. But sometimes people do it and they're really, they looking for a man or they looking for this or they want people to compliment them or something like that. Or it's just low self-esteem and they're just looking for attention. <sighs> that, especially when we're not supposed to be prideful people, you know, we're supposed to be humble people so if you're doing something to seek attention clearly that's a pride issue protecting the eyes of your brothers and sisters yes. you don't know what people are just you know you just struggling with you these don't things. know uh just because you are all right with it don't mean that everybody else. everybody else is comfortable with it and not only that but this a man might not admit it some some of course men's hearts aren't convicted in that area so they'll they would like to see it of course right. they would like to see your behind all out and your chest all out and all this other stuff they would like to see it so they're just like oh it ain't nothing wrong with it i don't see anything <laughs> wrong with it of course they would oh, say that sure you don't say and you know a lot of times women will ask men you think this is all right is it showing too much and they'll say no just because they want to see what right. you got lust is a sin i'm kind of just it, it, it's it is it's not love at all it's you not can't change love. those letters to me just to piggyback off of what she was saying um in regards to the ladies and you know our dress attire and stuff like that and the things that we wear we'll ask people you know it does this is this revealing too much you know first of all if you have to ask yourself that question nine times out of ten it it's is. revealing too much, you know, just or it's just, much. you know, to make somebody stumble. And um, a brother on my Twitter had, you know, posted a tweet today. And he said, the less clothes you wear, the less of a man you'll attract. So, I'm sorry, but, you know, I want a real man. I don't, <laughs> I don't want no, no passive anybody. And these days, ladies, you need to protect the eyes of your brothers and your sisters. Yeah. And vice versa, fellas. <laughs> Modesty isn't just for women. To piggyback off your piggyback. Um, <laughs> uh, fellas, we need for you to help us help you. Right. Um, also with the whole, you know, when you see a young lady or whatever and she's not dressed modestly or whatever, Christian fellas, 
let them know. Be like, I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't wear, or maybe you should cover that up mm-hmm. some because you know you can cause your brother to sin. You can right. call your cause your brother to fall into lust. He'll be lusting after you. And the Bible says that um, if you cause your brother to sin, it'll be better for you to have a millstone around your neck and you be cast into the sea. Yeah. That's a big deal to me. Like, you about to die. And this is like, you just caused your brother to sin. You just caused your sister to sin. Literally, just by what you're wearing. For a lot of the ladies um, in in our apparel, you know, it's it's what's been, like, broadcast in media. The bad thing is, like, a lot of men see that as beauty. You know, they see Beyonce, they see Rihanna. You know, they see all these different girls. And with their their no no clothes on, and they're oh that's cute or oh she's so beautiful. So of course, if your sister sees that and she's seeing that you're giving that person attention, you know, then she's gonna feel like okay, well I need to dress like that so he'll look at me. Mm-hmm. You know, when deep down inside you wouldn't bring her home to your mother. You know, so it's it's a it's a difference when a man walks up to a female and tells her you know you don't have to dress like that like. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. And God made clothes for you to cover up, you know, and only expose what needs to be exposed to your husband. Let me tell you something. A man going up to a woman to tell them to dress modestly will do something to a woman. Jesus. I mean, at first her neck might roll and stuff like that. She might, she might catch an attitude. But, but that means don't... that means it did something right. to her. <laughs> As we digress. <laughs> <laughs> um... We kind of went into the whole modesty is not just for women. No, it's for men as well. Men of y'all muscly shirts. I need y'all no. to do something about that. We can't. Uh, if I got a couple of my cleavage, I need you to come I'm your need six pack. That's just as much as a temptation. As I'm just everything. saying. The whole six pack situation, you don't know what somebody's struggle is. But you know, and the Bible tells me that even if I look upon a man with lust. I've already committed adultery in my, in my heart. heart. You See? not helping me. <laughs> That's more than one sin. That's more than one. Adultery and lust at the same time. You, you're you not helping me. Double whammy. Just you know. saying. And the, the pastor from Hope Baptist, Scott Brown, he said something like very, very profound. He said, we as women, we have to, we have a responsibility to protect the eyes of men. But men have to learn how to guard their eyes and their hearts and teach the younger men. Yep. So just as much as we need to help y'all, we need y'all to help us. How do we apply modesty to our Christian world? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay. So Deuteronomy 22 and 5 says, A woman shall not wear a man's garment, nor shall a man put on a woman's cloak, for whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord your God. An abomination, people. First Corinthians 10.23 says, All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be a stumbling block to um, our brothers and sisters. Not at all. But also, we don't want to do what the Bible clearly says is not um you know glorifying to him listening to some other sermons by you know pastor scott brown or he uh when i after listening to that and then reading deuteronomy 22 5 i personally was convicted as far as my my entire wardrobe was concerned personally this is a conviction for me he gets a little deep as far as pants are concerned and for women wearing pants and stuff like that when when they were made they were made for men and and stuff like that but um if you want to check that out we listened to it on sermon audio it was um the message was called modesty and Isn't it was so fitting <laughs> we'll put uh, the link below there yeah we'll put the link below you just click it and uh you can listen to that um but that that i no longer wear pants mm-hmm. Another reason that I don't wear pants for me, um, I, I'm everywhere is is hard for me because it's like you know after I started gaining weight and stuff like that, everything was like boom, bam, bow, and so me wearing tight pants is a stumbling block to my brother. And, and if I wear my my um, neckline too low, that's a stumbling block. And then you got you got to check, you got to check when you put on clothes stuff like that. You got to 
got to check and whatnot. Yeah. Bend around, you know, in the mirror and whatnot. Do what you got to do. I mean, it's just, it, you know, and he goes into, like she said, depth about wearing pants. And he doesn't necessarily say, oh, women, you cannot wear Repeat. pants. Yeah, he doesn't say that. You know, it yeah. depends on the type of pants you wear. For me, um, I've pretty much completely uh, got rid of pants because it's the summer and it's fun season. So wow. I'm very, very overly cautious of my apparel. You know, um, I normally wear underneath all of my tops like a cami. Um, yeah, something, you know, that even if the neckline is low, it's a safe guard there. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, you know, when you bend over, even if you have on a cami, it's still, you know, showing. So nine times out of ten, when I bend over, I'll grab like this and I'll bend over and pick up what I have to pick up so that mm -hmm. I can safeguard up there as well. I got to piggyback on what you just said. Um, modesty isn't just with clothing. Not it's at not all. just with clothing. You have to have an attitude of modesty as well. That thing that she just did with the whole holding of the chest, and that means that you're conscious of the fact that you know you could be a stumbling block, and there's a possibility that something could slip out somewhere or whatever. Right. And you you know you just do whatever, even bending down, holding your shirt down yeah, in the back I, or something I'll do like that, that. If I have one, because sometimes you know we work out. And uh, we're looking for a other avenues of clothing to put on when we work out. But mm -hmm. uh, the, most of the, the majority of the in time... In public, anyway. In public, yeah. And the majority of the time, we wear, you know, our shorts and our sweatpants. But even when I'm around, and I do dance, so even when I'm at, you know, dance practice or whatnot, I wear shorts and stuff like that. But I just don't know who's around. So I always, like, you know, hold up the back of my pants so I have to bend down and pick something up. Because at that time, I probably had, like, a t-shirt on, so there's no real reason to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but, like she said, modesty is just much more than what you wear. It's a lifestyle change, mm -hmm. and it's it gets to the heart of who you are. You know, as women and men, you know, of the Christian community, you know, it's just when we became new creatures in Christ, all of our thinking became new. Like, it's just a Everything. new season of the way that we think which means that it's a heart change you change know? heart renewed mind so you Don't have know. to be cautious at all times you know just that's what makes it a lifestyle yeah. you have to be <laughs> cautious we another okay. thing old scott brown said you know we were talking about the reason why we don't wear pants and stuff like that but he said which is very profound as well he said a dress can be just as immodest as pants this is true so you don't want it to be too clingy mm -hmm. or too short um another thing he said too is when you sit down and your skirt kind of comes above your knees sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes men it don't take it doesn't they don't have to see your booty all they gotta do is see an ankle a knee or a calf wear some heels and them calves be off she she what? walking down on these real good day. Oh, Jesus. I'm like a piece of chicken <laughs> Well, ladies, if you're gonna wear a skirt and you did forgot to do the lift check when you sat down, bring like a, a little cloth. A, you know, a jacket or something to lay across, you know, your knees. Mm -hmm. Um, just to protect that. With that being said, cover up. Cover up. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yay! So uh, we hope that this was um of an encouragement. Beneficial to you, to you, men and women. Yes. Yes. And not just a, a set of rules, you know. Some no, it's not. You're, you're being real legalistic when it's you know, not right? legalism if it's in the Bible and it says, "Look, please don't do this because." <clears throat> Say it again. It, it's not legalism if it's in the Bible and it says, please don't do this. Be not even please don't do this. Don't, don't do, do this, this because. And it tells you, you have to protect your brothers and sisters. That's the big responsibility. Exactly. And we need to take it seriously. All the way Protect seriously. them. As Christians, right? Mm -hmm. As we Christian? Christians. We, we... Yay. Thank you for doing this no with me. No problem. My Thank you for friend. having me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And she's going to be on more. This, this was just way too fun. <laughs> but we'll see you next time, or I'll see you next time, or we'll both see you next time. I mean, just sneak up in that mug. You don't have to know how <laughs> We love you. Praying love you for guys. you all. Mwah, mwah. Mm, mwah, mwah. Tell me what you think. Leave any comments you want. Um, if you have anything to add, you can put it in the comments. Like we said, we're going to add that um, sermon from uh, Scott Brown on Modesty in the bottom bar. And please subscribe to my best friends. Um, YouTube and stuff. Please. Yeah, I need some. Share her video, you guys. Like, please share it. Share her video.
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have some more videos coming up. I told you I like to do makeup, so we're gonna gonna do gonna do one. I gotta bring my mama for that one. <laughs> um, I have a Twitter and I have an Instagram. You can follow me at different pearls. I also have a Twitter and an Instagram and all that stuff. And I'm not even gonna spell it. I'm just gonna put it down in the bottom box right there. Just the little arrow thing. Just click it. It'll be there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Love. Peace. Oh no, should we should we do this? And so that belongs to Jesus. <laughs>